Welcome back, everybody. My next guest is an actor, writer, producer, comedian, and now a Broadway star. Please welcome Nick Kroll. <laughs> Well, for the people out there who may not know what I was talking about when I said Broadway star. Yes, yes. Is that your show, Oh Hello? Yes. With oh. Don Mulaney. Yes. On Broadway. Yes. Fantastic. Thank you. How does it feel? Yes. Oh, let's not move on from the let's, You know, we're going to linger. Let's we're going to linger. Yeah. How does it feel to be on Broadway? Broadway. It's amazing. It's like what show business felt like it should be like. You know, you do a show. You were our guest. You came and did our show. Yeah, last last Friday, Friday. night. Yes, yeah, we, it was so fun. You have guests come on every night. Yes, we have a different guest every night, um, and we prank them with too much tuna fish. Um, <laughs> you do offer a sandwich <laughs> as as a thank you for being on the show. Yeah, and it's really it's a great thank you. It's an honor because it's a huge tuna sandwich. I would go so far as to say it's it's too much tuna. Hey! <laughs> it's too much tuna for the five people in the audience who understand what that means. Uh, uh -huh. uh, I'm enjoying, by the way, that I almost just seem like a floating head on this chair yeah, you really here. Are blend you really are blending I'm really it nicely. Blending nicely. We should warn the guests. Yeah. We should, <laughs> we should warn the guests. Yeah. Or change the chairs yeah. or something or like that. Yeah, or just go deep, go low. Just go right in. Just be like, the head of Nick Kroll was on <laughs> Colbert tonight. Um, and then you the, like improvise this big section in the middle of the show. Yes, and and it's uh and and it's it's just the most fun thing in the world. Uh, you were amazing. We, I think that might have been the longest segment we ever did. We talked for like a half hour on yeah, stage. Yeah, yeah, I was like half an hour. Was I this your like was this your Broadway debut? Uh, well, you asked me that. Yes, I, I did. That. I have been I've performed uh, Sondheim at Lincoln Center, but I've been told that's not Broadway. Yeah, and I there we can beep this right because sure. Lincoln Center's bull. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's a nowhere place. It's Where a nobody thing. Where do you find thing. the courage? Where do you find the courage, <laughs> Nick Kroll? You're going to get the Lincoln Center. You're going to get the Lincoln Center Mafia I after know, you. I know, I know. Which is like four... they, they go into the violin cases and you open them up. It's violins. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You're crazy. I know. You're crazy. I know. I They're know. made men. I know, I Don't know. you understand? The New York Council for the Arts has got a bullseye on they're the back gonna, of your head. They're going to suffocate me with NPR tote bags. So, okay, so you do this show. You've been doing yes. the show. Uh, yes. You've been working on the show for about a year. You've yes. been on Broadway. How long have you been on Broadway? We've on Broadway for uh, about two months. We've okay. got about another two months to go. It's me and my buddy John Mulaney, who's the funniest person yeah. on the planet. It's devastating, devastatingly, crushingly, structural damage to the theater funny on almost every line. I can't believe how angry I am, how good it is. <laughs> Thank you. Because it's so, I look at it and I know, I know what it took to put that show together. But you're fooling around there, too. Does it ever, like, just completely come apart? It does occasionally. Well, they're like, we had Whoopi Goldberg on the show, uh, and she had done her show, Whoopi, um, Mike Nichols directed, in 1984. Mm -hmm. And so she came into the show, and she's like, oh, this theater's haunted. And, uh, and we're... Passive and aggressive much? Maybe, but also, she, she is an expert on ghosts. Let's not forget. <laughs> so... Yes. So yes. She, and uh, nuns on the run. Yes, exactly. Yes. So she... She did the show, and the show was a mess. Lighting cues, everything was going wrong. The night she was there? The night she was there, and I was like, the ghost of the Lyceum Theater uh, is, like, angry that these two shows are colliding. Like, we walked off stage, and I was like, this audience stunk, and the, our mics were still live. <laughs> like, everything went wrong. Oh, my and heart just hurt. My I heart know. actually just hurt when I know. you said that. I know. Oh like, if you had seen that audience, come on, give me a break. They're not like these gorgeous people. These are beautiful people. Right so, here. yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm afraid that's all we have time yeah, for. Yeah, that's Thank fine. You for being here. So, uh, okay, now, okay, but as much as I want to talk about Broadway, yeah. you also, you're in a, 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 a movie now called Loving. Yes. Okay? And for the people who don't know what Loving versus Virginia was, tell the people what a landmark case this was. It's this amazing case. It's the story of Richard and Mildred Loving, who were uh, an interracial couple, a white man and a woman of color, who were married in Virginia and were arrested for being married in the late 1950s. 
um, and they brought their case through the court system, eventually getting to the Supreme Court in 1967, where uh, the Warren Court uh, overturned the ban on interracial marriage nationwide. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it's a, it's like, um, it's, it's amazing because it's a story that a lot of people don't actually know about. It's not taught in the schools and as part of like civil rights uh, history, and it's monumentally important, and it's still important, obviously, with what's happening in the country right now. I mean, obviously, I'm voting for Trump because I think he's the, the right man to lead America into the apocalypse. <laughs> but, um, um, but you know what always got me about the case is that if you wrote this movie and it didn't actually happen in reality, and you called it Loving versus Virginia, you go, come on, you can't call it yeah. loving. Yeah, you got to change. Their last name can't be loving. No, it's and, too perfect. And it was, and it is, and you see these people, and they're. What's amazing about the story, and it's Joel Edgerton and Ruth Nega who are phenomenal in the movie, and uh, Jeff Nichols directed it, and it's just a beautifully realized film, and they're very, they're very quiet simple country people who were not political people. They just wanted to be married. They couldn't understand why they shouldn't be able to be. And, and, you, and you played the ACLU lawyer. Yeah, so I got the script. They were like, Jeff Nichols, who directed Mud and, and Midnight Special, was like, they were, he was interested in me for the role, and, and they're like, and I was like, and what's the character? And they're like, his name is Bernie Cohen. And I was like, <laughs> all right, I get why I'm going to be in this movie. <laughs> um, Speaking of, Mel Gibson was amazing last night. Wasn't I found it yeah, yeah. fascinating. Yeah, 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 it was and I was told that the FCC forced you to have me on the show to Jew up the whole thing a little yeah, exactly. bit. Exactly. We had to. <laughs> yeah. We had to. Yeah, just to keep the license. Yeah, exactly. No. <laughs> we, yeah, he's a sweet guy. Yeah, he and um, <laughs> you played this lawyer, and you're. You're you, you're too you're too young to like you're not even allowed to go to the Supreme Court because you're too young to actually try the case. Right. So so there, Bernie Cohen and, and his uh, the gentleman who came on the other lawyer Phil Hirschkoff, uh, who John Bass plays. They they were so young and inexperienced. They really were kind of like faking it till they make it. And Bernie had to introduce Phil because Phil had only been out of law school for three years. And these two gentlemen brought this case through the you know from the ACLU and and brought it to the Supreme Court and and really changed the country, and Richard and Mildred really changed the country. Well, we have, we have a clip here of you talking uh, to the couple about um, how you, you're going to have their back. Jim? We wanted you to know that with all this travel back and forth from Virginia, you have my number, and if anybody arrests you, you have them get in touch with us. We're not going to let you spend one minute longer in jail than it takes us to get down there to get you out, okay? Okay. Good luck to you. You did a good job today. <laughs> I sure appreciate what y'all are doing. Okay. Uh, we'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you, gentlemen. You know they aren't going back to Washington. And there's no guarantee we can get them out if they get arrested again. Mm-hmm. I mean, what's it like to do drama after being, you know, a comedian for so long? Is this like your first foray? It is. I've, you know, I've had a little bits and pieces, but this is definitely the most sort of straight drama that I've done. And, and I, I'm, I'm done being a comedian. I'm a serious actor now. Oh, I understand. <laughs> and I don't, I don't want to do funny things anymore, okay? okay. All right. So well, I, do you want to give a shot at it right now? I'd love to do... I, I don't want to be funny in panel interviews. I want to I have a dramatic interview with you. All right, let's get our fingers underneath this, okay? okay. Let's try this again. I'm going to ask you. Um, look, Jimmy, can we get this a little more dramatic, please? Yeah. Is it possible? <laughs> now, um, Mr. Kroll. Um, Stevie. You are on... <laughs> you're on Broadway right now, and, and, uh, and all that that entails. <laughs> it's just to put on a mask every night and... <clears throat> and have to become someone else. What that does to a man... <laughs> Steve, I have no one around, no one to support me in my I'm family. Here. I'm here. <laughs> you are my father. You are my father! You are my mother. <laughs> Everybody! <laughs>
back on the road.